Coming up on 5-Minute News. American and Chinese diplomats clash publicly at start of first talks of Biden presidency. U.S. House approves protections for dreamers. And Putin offers Biden public talks after U.S. president says he thinks he is a killer. It's Friday, March 19. I'm Anthony Davis. The United States and China leveled sharp rebukes of each other's policies in the first high-level in-person talks of the Biden administration on Thursday, with deeply strained relations of the two global rivals on rare public display during the meeting's opening session in Alaska. The United States, which quickly accused China of grandstanding and violating the meeting's protocol, had been looking for a change in behaviour from China, itself having expressed earlier this year a hope to reset sour relations. On the eve of the talks, Beijing had prefaced what would be a contentious meeting, with its ambassador to Washington saying the United States was full of illusions if it thinks China will compromise. Sparring in a highly unusual extended back and forth in front of cameras, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken and National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan opened their meeting with China's top diplomat and state councillor in Anchorage, fresh off Blinken's visits to allies Japan and South Korea. The Chinese delegates responded with the 15-minute speech in Chinese while the US side awaited translation, lashing out about what he said was the United States' struggling democracy, poor treatment of minorities, and criticizing its foreign and trade policies. Following the exchange, a senior US administration official said China had immediately violated agreed-to protocol, which was two minutes of opening statements by each of the principals. Before taking office, U.S. President Joe Biden had been attacked by Republicans who feared his administration would take too soft an approach with China. But in recent weeks, top Republicans have given the president a gentle nod for revitalizing relations with U.S. allies in order to confront China, a shift from former President Donald Trump's go-it-alone America-first strategy. The U.S. House of Representatives on Thursday passed bills providing a pathway to citizenship for immigrants nicknamed Dreamers, who are living illegally in the United States after entering as young children, as well as for a large number of immigrant farm workers. The two measures now go to the deeply divided Senate, where they face a difficult climb. By a vote of 228 to 197, the Democratic-controlled House passed the Dreamers bill with only nine Republicans supporting it. The legislation would allow Dreamers to live, work, serve in the military and continue their educations without the threat of deportation and to eventually win US citizenship if they meet a set of requirements. The House then approved the Farm Workers' Bill 247 to 174 to shield about a million immigrant labourers, many of whom have been in the United States for decades, from deportation. The legislation coincides with Democratic President Joe Biden's efforts to contain the number of migrants arriving at the US-Mexico border, many of whom are fleeing dangerous conditions in Central America. Dreamers, numbering around 1.8 million young immigrants, made the dangerous journey on their own, with parents or hired hands, often to escape gang violence in Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador and other countries. President Vladimir Putin said on Thursday that he and US President Joe Biden should hold live online talks in coming days after Biden said he thought the Russian leader was a killer and diplomatic ties sank to a new post-Cold War low. Putin, speaking on television, cited a Russian children's playground chant to scathingly respond to Biden's accusation with the comment that he who said it, did it. In an ABC News interview broadcast on Wednesday that prompted Russia to recall its Washington ambassador for consultations, Biden said, I do, when asked if he believed Putin was a killer. 
Biden was quick to extend a nuclear arms pact with Russia after he took office, but his administration has said it would take a tougher line with Moscow than Washington did during Trump's term in office and engage only when there is a tangible benefit for the United States. Putin said he had last spoken to Biden by phone at the US president's request and that he now proposed they had another conversation today or Monday to be held by video link and broadcast live. Putin said he was ready to discuss Russia's relations with the United States and other issues such as regional conflicts, adding that he would be having a weekend break in a remote part of Russia. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate, delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news. Daily.